Hello, my dear friends. I'm back with MCQs of day seven and eight. Till now, we have completed day one till day six. So, here we are going to continue with the same in our today's video as well. And I hope these question answers are benefiting you all. If you require anything else, just message us in the comment section or you can WhatsApp us in the number which is given here. Let's begin today's MCQs. Question number one. K.N. Daruwala was awarded the Sahitya Academy Award for Dash in 1984. Your options are Apparition in April, Crossing of Rivers, Landscapes or the Keepers of the Dead. Your answer D is the correct option. The Keepers of the Dead. Let's see the highlighters. Highlighter says, Keki N. Daruwala is an Indian poet and short story writer in English. He is also former Indian police service officer. He was awarded the Sahitya Academy Award in 1984 for his poetry collection, The Keepers of the Dead by the Sahitya Academy, India's National Academy of Letters. He was awarded Padma Shri, the fourth highest civilian award in India in 2014. He was born in 1939 in Lahore, British India. Question number two. A professor of physics turned a poet at the age of 40 in 1968. Who is the poet? Option A. Shiv K. Kumar. Option B. Jayant Mahapatra. Option C. Bhatnagar. Option D. Nijim HKL. So here option B that is Jayant Mahapatra is the correct option. Let's see the highlighters. Jayant Mahapatra is a major Indian English poet. He is the first Indian poet to win Sahitya Academy Award for English Poetry. He was awarded Padma Shri, the fourth highest civilian award, civilian honor in India in 2009. However, he returned the Padma Award in 2015 to protest against the rising intolerance in India. He was born on 22nd October 1928 in Katak, Orissa. He was born into a prominent Uriya Christian family. Mahapatra went to Stewart School in Katak, Orissa. He completed his MSc in Physics and Physics from Patna University, Bihar, India. He began his teaching career as a lecturer in physics in 1949. Question number three. Arnold's Dover Beach is addressed to his friends, his mother, his wife, his father. Option C is the correct one, that is his wife. Let's move towards the highlighters of this answer. Dover Beach is a lyric poem by the English poet Matthew Arnold. It was first published in 1967 in the collection New Poems, but surviving notes indicate the composition may have begun as early as 1849. The most likely date is 1851. Opening lines are, the sea is calm tonight, and closing lines are, where ignorant armies clash by night. Here we find dramatic monologue as well. The poet describes a distant, distinct clash between religion and the modern world. There are four stanzas in this poem. Each varies in length. Stanza 1 has 14 lines. Stanza 2 has 6 lines. Stanza 3 includes 8 lines. And stanza 9, sorry, stand, last stanza has 9 lines. It is 5 iams per line and irregular iambic pentameter. Question number 4. Filling Storm Jones is declared to, sorry, is dedicated to. Option A, George Littleton. 
ऑप्शन बी जॉर्ज एलियट ऑप्शन सी टी एस एलियट एंड ऑप्शन डी रॉबर्ट फ्रॉस्ट सो हियर योर आंसर इज जॉर्ज लिलिटन लिटिलटन सॉरी लेट्स सी द हाइलाइटर्स द हिस्ट्री ऑफ टॉम जोन्स अ फाउंडलिंग ऑफन नोन सिंपली एज टॉम जोन्स इज अ कॉमिकल novel by english playwright and novelist henry fielding it is a bildungs roman and a picaresque novel it was first published in 28th february 1749 in london and is among the earliest english works to be classified as a novel it has 18 books fielding dedicated tom jones to his patron george Littleton, as proof of his intention, he notes that he based the character Allworthy on his family friend Ralph Allen. Question number five: Virginia Woolf's *To the Lighthouse* is a symbolic novel, which is divided into dash parts. So here, options are six parts, five parts, four parts, and three parts. Answer is three parts. Let's move to the highlighters. To the Lighthouse is a novel by Virginia Woolf. The novel centers on the Ramsay family and their visit to Isle of Skye in Scotland between nineteen twenty sorry nineteen ten to nineteen twenty. There are three parts. First. part is the windom second part is time passes and third part is the lighthouse question number 6 the term practical criticism is coined by william impson option a w k wimsatt junior option b i a richards option c and f r lewis option d option c that is i a richards is the correct answer Let's see the highlighters. Practical criticism is like the normal stud, so formal study of English literature. English literature itself, a relatively young disciple. Practical criticism is like the formal study of English literature itself, a. relatively young discipline it began in the 1920s with a series of experiments by cambridge critic i a richards question number 7 which among the shakespeare's play cannot be grouped under romances option a romeo juliet option b cymbeline option c the winter's tale option d the tempest option A that is Romeo and Juliet cannot be grouped under romances. Let's see the highlighters. Romeo and Juliet is a tragedy written by William Shakespeare. It is a tragedy therefore it cannot be considered as romance. The plot based on an Italian tale translated into verse as The Tragical History of Romeo and Juliet by Arthur Brooke in 1562 The plot set in Verona Italy begins with a street brawl between Montague and Capulet servants who like their masters are sworn enemies Question number 8 Who was defined who has defined poetry as a fundamental creative act using language languages options are h w longfellow ralph waldo emotion dylan thomas and william wordsworth and your option is dylan thomas let's see the highlighters dylan thomas dylan dylan marley thomas was a wells poet and writer who was born on 27th august 19 sorry 27th october 1914 he died on 9th november 
1953. How many years of happiness was Dr. Foster's promised by the devil? Option A 16, Option B 20, Option C 24, Option D 28. Your option C that is 24 years. 24 years of happiness was promised by the devil Mephistopheles, okay, who was the servant of Lucifer in the play Dr. Faustus. Therefore, option C is the correct answer. The highlighters. He hands over the de he hands over the deed, which promises his body and soul to Lucifer, in exchange for twenty four years of constant service from Mephistopheles. This play was written during Elizabethan period. Therefore, it is an Elizabethan tragedy. It was first performed in sixteen hundred and four. Question number ten. After the death of Christopher Marlowe, who completed his unfinished poem, Hero and Leander? Your options are Shakespeare, Thomas Nash, option C, George Chapman, and option D, Thomas More. Here, option C is the correct answer, and he is George Chapman. Let's see the highlighters. Hero and Leanna is a poem by Christopher Marlowe that recalls the Greek myth of Hero and Leanna. After Marlowe's untimely death, it was completed by George Chapman. The major poet Henry Petov published an alternative completion to the poem. The poem was first published five years after Marlowe's demise. The poem may be called an epilion. This is a little epic. It is longer than a lyric or elegy. Question number 11. In which year Globe Theatre got fire and destroyed? Your options are 1610, 1611, 1612, 1613. And here... The answer is 1613. In the year 1613, Globe Theatre was destroyed in fire. Let's see the highlighters. Shakespeare's Globe is a reconstruction of the Globe Theatre, an Elizabethan playhouse for which William Shakespeare wrote his plays in the London borough of Southwark on the south bank of the River Thames. The original theater was built in 1599 and it was destroyed in fire in 1613. It was rebuilt in 1614 and then demolished in 1644. Question number 12. The phrase pathetic fallacy is coined by option A. Milton, option B. Coleridge, option C. Carlyle. And option D, John Ruskin. And option D, John Ruskin, Ruskin is the correct answer. Let's see the highlighters. The phrase pathetic fallacy is a literary term for the attribution of human emotion and conduct to things found in nature that are not human. It is a kind of personification. The British culture critic John Ruskin coined the term in volume 3 of his work Modern Painters in 1856. It comes from the Latin pathos meaning feeling. The word fallacy comes from the Latin fallax meaning deceitful and false. If we define it, it means emotional falseness. Question number 13. Which of these is the dark comedies, problem comedies, dark comedies or problem comedies? Option A, measure for measure, as you like it, much ado about nothing. And number D, none of these. Here option A, that is measure for measure, is a correct option. 
Highlighter says, Measure for Measure is a play by William Shakespeare, believed to have been written between 1603 to 1604, originally published in the first folio of 1623, where it was listed as a comedy. The play's first, the play's first recorded performance occurred in 1604. It is a problem play. Question number 14. Walpole, the fox, was published in option A, 1598, option B, 1601, option C, 1602, and option D, 1605. Your option D is the correct answer, that is 1605. Why? Let us find out. Walpole is a comedy play by English playwright Ben Johnson. First produced, first produced in 1605 to 1606, drawing on elements of city comedy and beast fable. It was written in Jacobean era, therefore it is Jacobean comedy as well. Who started, sorry, who stated literature is a criticism of life? Option A, Matthew Arnold. Option B, John Keats. Option C, William Shakespeare. Option D, John Milton. Option A, that is Matthew Arnold, is the correct option. Matthew Arnold, his famous phrase is, literature is a criticism of life. Arnold calls for a replacement of religion by literature. He recommends his own world view. A poetic view of life in which morality touched by emotion governs our being. He advocates disinterestedness, disinterestedness, a circulation of fresh and free ideas, freedom from British provincialism and an acceptance of European ideas, especially drawn from Germany and France. In the view of Arnold, the literature of 18th century is provincial and the literature of Romance age lack, lacks intellectual vigor. Arnold had a very low opinion about his contemporaries as Carlyle as moral Desperado, Ruskin as eccentric, Tennyson's Maud as lamentable production and Swinburne as pseudo Shelley. He said that the Alexandrine and the couplet are inadequate for poetic expression. Question number 16. Who wrote the book? Grammatology. Here options are Jacques Lucan, option B, Michael Foucault, option C, Jacques Derrida, and option D, Ronald Barth. Here option C, that is Jacques Derrida, is the correct answer. He wrote the book on grammatology. And let's see the highlighters. An Algerian born French philosopher, best known for developing a form of semiotic analysis known as deconstruction, which he discussed in numerous texts and developed in the context of phenomenology, post constructivism, and Postmodern philosophy. He was born on 15th July 1930 at El Bayer, Algeria. He died on 9th October 2004 in Paris, France. Here, let's move to the question number 17. Who defines Romanticism as the Renaissance of Wonder? Option A. Duncan. Option B. Goethe. Option C, Peter. Option D, Hay. Here, option A, Duncan, is the correct answer. 
Theodore Watt Duncan, Duncan was an English poetry critic who poetry critic with major periodicals and herself, himself a poet. He was born on 12th October 1832. He died on 6th June 1914. Let's move to the next question. Question number 18. Shelley's unfinished poem is Option A. Hymn to Intellectual Beauty Option B. The Cloud Option C. The Triumph of Life Option D. None of the above here, your correct option is option C, the triumph of life. Let's see what highlighters has to say. The triumph of life was the last major work by Percy by Cicely before his death in 1822. The work was left unfinished. Shelley wrote the poem at Casa Magni Lerici, Italy in the early summer of 1822. 1822, he modeled the poem written in Terja Rima on Patarch, Trionfi, and Dante's comedy. Let's move to the next question. Option 19. The Revolt of Islam by Shelley is a long narrative poem in Option A. Blank verse. Option B. Spenserian stanza. Option C. Terja Rima. Option D. Octosyllabic couplet. Here the option B, Spenserian stanza, is the correct answer. The highlighter says the revolt of Islam that happened in 1818 is a poem in 12 cantos composed of Percy by Cicely, composed by Percy by Cicely in 1817. The poem was originally published under the Laun and Sitna or the revolution, sorry, the revolution of the Golden City, a vision of the 19th century by Charles and James Oliver in December 1817. It consists of 4818 lines. The poem is in Spenserian stanzas with each stanza containing nine lines in total. 8 lines in iambic pentameter followed by a single alexandrine line in iambic hexameter. The rhyme pattern is A B A B B C B B C. It was written in the spring and summer of 1817. Question number 20. This time, this lime tree bower my prison is an or a poem, a dash poem. Here, option A is meditative, option B subjective, option C narrative, and option D none of the above. So, what will come here? Meditative. It is a meditative poem. Next question. Let's see the highlighters before moving towards another question. Highlighter says, the, "This line, the this line, three bower, my prison is a poem." Written by Samuel Taylor Coleridge during 1797, the poem discusses a time in which Coleridge was forced to stay beneath a time in which Coleridge was forced to stay beneath a tree while his friends were able to enjoy the countryside. Countryside, and it is written in blank verse. Next question number 21: The lyric of Shelley. Which shows the Platonism is Ode to Evening, Alastor, Hymn to Intellectual Beauty, and Option D, none of the above. Here your answer goes with Option C, that is Hymn to Intellectual Beauty. Hymn to Intellectual Beauty is a poem written by Percy by Cicely in 1816 and published in 1817. Hymn to Intellectual Beauty was written during the summer of 1816 while Percy and Mary Shelley stayed with John Lord Byron near Lake Geneva, Switzerland. It has 84 lines. Percy by C sent a finished copy of the poem to his friend Leigh Hunt.
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी टू हु डाइड बाई ड्रॉनिंग ऑप्शन ए शेली ऑप्शन बी किड्स ऑप्शन सी बाइडन ऑप्शन डी स्कॉट एंड ह्योर द आंसर इज शेली पी बी शेली डाइड बाई ड्रॉनिंग शेली ड्रॉन इन हिज ओन शेलिंग बोट द जॉन द जॉन जॉन वाइल रिटर्निंग फ्रॉम लिवोनो टू लेरिसी इन द लेट आफ्टरनून ऑफ जुलाई एथ 1822 during a violent summer storm less than a month before his 30th birthday the total number of poems include included in lyrical ballad is option a 19 option b 23 option c 20 option d 18 here option b that is 23 is the correct answer let's see the highlighters lyrical ballads with a few other poems is a collection of poems by william wordsworth and samuel taylor coleridge first published in 1798 question number 24 kato a tragedy is written addition in the year option a 1717 option b 1713 option c 177 and option d 1716 here highlighter is 17 13 so this is the correct answer notable praise of addition that is literature 2007 kato a tragedy 1730 the drama a common play by 16 1716 let's see the highlighters he believed that the best poetry relied on contemporary language and the dislike the use of decorative or purposely archaic languages friends we have completed all the 25 question answers if you wish to get notes in pdf form and if you wish to join our whatsapp group for everyday mcqs do contact me in the number which is given at the starting of the video Thank you so much take care bye bye Hello my dear friends we will continue with MCQs of day 8 as well So let's begin with question number 1 Beowulf is a narrative poem an epic poem option C mock heroic poem mock epic poem or an allegory Here the answer is it is an epic poem. Let's see the highlighters. The most important work of all English literature is Beowulf, and it is an old English epic poem, which consists of three one eight two alternative verse lines. It was produced between nine seventy five and thousand twenty five BC. It is written by an anonymous poet the language is west saxon dialect of old english setting if we talk about setting it is in scandinavia 6th century the protagonist of the poem is beowulf a hero of the geats a main subject is the battle of beowulf in young youth and old age next the highlight is there are three battles first battle is grendel option sorry second battle is grendel's mother and the third battle is with the dragon let's move to question number 2 who is beowulf's uncle option a hrothgar option b hig option c Wiglaf option D, Higelac. Here option D, Higelac is the correct answer. Giant Beowulf's uncle is king of Geats, husband of Hig, and Higelac heartily welcomes Beowulf back from Denmark. Question number three, Tridib is the protagonist in. the shadow lines the hungry tide the sea sea of puppies or the option 
D. The class place. Here, option A is the correct answer. Tree dip is the protagonist in A Shadow Lines. The Shadow Lines was published in 1988 and it has won Sahitya Academy Award as well. It is against the backdrop of historical event which is divided into two parts, going away and coming home. It is translated by Shalini Topiwala into Gujarati in 1998 as well. Question number four. Darling, I listen and for many a time I have been half in love with easeful death. Here, where do we find these lines? In Ode to a Nightingale? In to autumn or option C ode to ode on melancholy and option D endymion. These lines are found in ode to a nightingale, which is option A. So option A is correct one. Ode to a nightingale is a personal poem which describes Keats's journey into the state of negative capability. It is a fundamental phenomenal poem relates life sufferings to the briefness of birth's song first published in 1819 it explores two main issues the first is the connection between agony and joy and the second is connection between life and death it has eight stanzas and each stanza consists of 10 lines if we talk about rhyme scheme we find a, B, A, B, C, D, E, C, D, E and it is written in iambic pentameter. Let's move to question number 5. In which year Chaucer was imprisoned by the French? Here options are 1350, option B 1360, option C 1370 and option D 1380. Here, option B, that is 1360, is correct answer. This was the year when Chaucer was imprisoned by French army. Here, let's see the highlighters. It's It happened in Middle Ages. He was born on 1340 in London, England. He died on 25th October, 1400. He married to Philippa Roet. In the year 1366. Here, next question is Renaissa is a French word, Greek word, Italian word, and option D, French, sorry, Spanish word. Here, this is very easy question, I guess, because we keep on talking about uh, French Revolution and Renaissa and the poets, leaders who were during that period so it is very easy the word has come from French of course let's see the highlighters it is a period in European history uh, making transition from Middle Ages to modernity covering 15th and 16th centuries it began in the year in the 14th century in Florence Italy the term Renascita first appeared in Giorgio Vesari's Lives of Artists and it is French word meaning rebirth, revival and reawaken. Question number 7 Ah, but a man's reach should exceed his grasp or what is a heaven for? Here, these lines appear in Robert Browning's Andiel, Andrea del Sarto Tennyson's Morte de Arthur, Arnold's The Scholar Gypsy, or option D, W. B. Yeats Byzantium. Here, option A, that is Robert Browning's Andre and Andrea del Sarto is the correct answer. Andrea del Sarto, also called the Faultless Painter, sorry, Faultless Painter, is a poem by Robert Browning is published in his poetry collection men and women it has dramatic monologue about the italian painter it talks about italian painter 
Andrea del Sarto, written in iambic pentameter. Let's move to question number 8. Hopkins, the wreck of the Dutch land, can be called an ideal, a satire, an ode, an elegy. Here, option C, that is, an ode, is the correct answer. The wreck of the Dutch land is a 35 stanza ode by Gerald Manley Hopkins with Christian themes composed in 1875 and 1876 though not published until 1918. It depicts the shipwreck of the SS Dutchland. It is a masterpiece because of its length, ambition and use of sprung rhythm and any stress. Question number 9. Which of the following cannot be considered one of the four great tragedies of Shakespeare? Option A. King Lear, option B, Hamlet, option C, Macbeth, and option D, Antony and Cleopatra. Here, option D, that is Antony and Cleopatra, is the correct option. The four great tragedies of Shakespeare, that is Othello, Macbeth, Hamlet, and the King Lear, and Antony and Cleopatra is a tragedy by Shakespeare based on Thomas North's English translation of Plutarch's Lives. Question number 10. Which of the following is not a Roman play by Shakespeare? Option A. Antony and Cleopatra. Option B. Coriolanus. Option C. Measure for Measure. And Option D. Julius Caesar. Here Option C, that is Measure for Measure, is the correct answer. There are four Roman plays, Antony and Cleopatra, Coriolanus, Julius Caesar and Titus Andronicus. Here, measure for measure, it is comedy play and problem play as well. Who coined the term womanism? Option A, Alice Walker. Option B, Virginia Woolf. Option C, Judith Rich. Judith Wright, sorry. Option D, Barbara Johnson. Here, option A is the correct answer, that is Alice Walker is the one to coin the term womanism. Womanism is a social theory based on the history and everyday experience of women of color, especially black women. Writer Alice Walker coined the term womanist in a short story coming apart in 1979. Walker defines a womanist as a black feminist or feminist of color. Question number 12. Hamashia means reversal of action. Option B. Pride. Option C. Purgation of emotions such as pity and fear. Option D. Error to judgment. Let's see what is the answer. Here, option D. Error to judgment is the correct option. Hamashia arose from the Greek herb Hamartanian, means to miss the mark or to err. Aristotle introduced the term to the po uh, poetics to describe the error of judgment, which ultimately brings about the tragic hero's downfall. Question number 13. Competence and performance are the terms coined by Option A. Noam Chomsky Option B. Wilga Rivers Option C, Bloomfield, and option D, none of these. The term were proposed by Noam Chomsky in, aspect, in aspects of the theory of syntax when he stressed the need for a generative grammar that mirrors a speaker's competence and pictures the creative aspect of linguistic ability. Question number 14. Oh, lift me a wave, a leaf, a, I, uh, a dash. I fall upon the thrones of life and I bleed. Supply the missing word. Oh, lift me as a wave, a leaf, a reed, a dust, a bird, 
or a cloud. Here, option D is correct, that is a cloud. Oh, lift me as a wave, a leaf, a cloud. I fall upon the thrones of life and I bleed. Here, the poem is from Odd to West Wind. Odd to the West Wind is an ode written by Percy by Cicely in 1819 near Florence, Italy. Originally published in 1820 by Charles in London as part of collection Prometheus Unbound. It is a lyrical drama in four acts with other poems. It consists of five sections or cantos written in terza rima. Each section consists of four targets ABA, BCB, CDE and DC, DED. The rhymic couplet is EE. The ode is written in iambic pentameter. The poem begins with three sections describing the wind's effect upon earth, air and ocean. In the last section, in the last two sections, the poet speaks directly to wind asking for its power to lift him up and make him its companion in its wanderings. The poem ends with an optimistic note, which is that if winter days are here, then spring is not very far. The first stanza brings, begins with a, alliteration, wild west wind. Here, the sound of W is repeated in all these three words. Question number 15, which is not written by Oscar Wilde? Option A, saints and sinners. Option B, an ideal husband. Option C, the importance of being earnest and option D, a woman of no importance. The answer is a saint and sinner. Option A, saints and sinner. Saints and sinner is a short story collection written by Edna O'Brien. Let's move to question number 16. The term cultural sonnet was coined by Jacques Lucan, option B, Michael Foucault. Option C, Hopkins, and option D, Ronald Barthes. Here, option C, that is Hopkins, is the correct answer. Gerald, Gerard Manley Hopkins was an English poet and um, Jesuit priest. He was born on 28th July 1844 at Stratford, United Kingdom. He died on 8th June 1889 in Dublin, Ireland. He belongs to Victorian era. Question number 17. Thomas, Thomas Kidd's The Spanish Tragedy was influenced by option A, Seneca, option B, Goat, option C, Peter, and option D, Hay. Here, option A is the correct answer, that is Seneca. The Spanish Tragedy or Hieronimo is Mad, again, is an Elizabethan tragedy written by Thomas Kidd between 1582 and 1580, 1592. It is a revenge play or revenge tragedy. The play contains several violent, violent murders and includes as one of its characters a personification of revenge. The first mature Elizabethan drama is this. It is influenced by Seneca. Question number 18. Who coined the term objective correlative in his essay? In his essay. Option A. Coleridge. Option B. Wordsworth. Option C. Eliot. And option D. Na none of the above. None of these. Here option C is the correct answer. It is T.S. Eliot who coined the term objective correlative. Objective correlative is literary theory first set forth by T.S. Eliot in the essay Hamlet and his Problems and published in the Sacred Wood in 1920. T.S. Eliot used this phrase to describe a set of objects, a situation, a chain of events which shall be the formula of that particular emotion. Question number 19. The author of Nation and narration is the Edward Said, uh, sorry, Edward Said, Homi Bhabha, Spivak, 
and none of these. Here, Homi, aka Baba, is an Indian, Indian English scholar and critical theorist who was born on November 1st, 1949 in Bombay, India. His spouse is Jacqueline Baba. Question number 20. Furbal is a character in The Way of the World, Tom Jones, All for Love and None of These. Here, option A, The Way of the World is correct option. The Way of the World is a play by the English playwright William Congreve. First performance was, uh, was in the year 1700 and it is restoration comedy set in London. Foible, Lady Wishfort's servant. Foible was Lady Wishfort's servant. Question number 21. Who of the following poets wrote on the pity of war option a w h auden option b spencer option c wilfred owen and option d name of none of uh, none of these here option c that is wilfred owen is a correct answer wilfred owen is an english poet and soldier he was born on 18th march 1893 oswestry in oswestry in the united kingdom he died on 4th november 1918, Samber Ice Canal, France. In Samber Ice Canal, France. Question number 22. You Can't Do Both is a novel by Kinsley Amis, Keats, Byron, or Scott. Here, option A Kinsley Amis is the correct answer. So, Kinsley William Amis is an English novelist, poet, critic, and teacher. He was born on 16th April 1922 at Clapham Town, London, United Kingdom. He died on 22nd October 1995, London, in United Kingdom. Question number 23. Which play of E. O. Neill is autobiographical? Harry Ape. Long Day's Journey into Night, Option C, Desire Under the Elms, and Option D, Farewell to Arms. Your answer is Option B, The Long, long Day's Journey into Night. Long Day's Journey into Night is a drama play into four acts written by American playwright Eugene O'Neill in 1941-42. It is published in 1956. It won Tony Award for Best Play. It is an autobiographical account of his explosive home life with a morphine-addicted mother and alcoholic father. It's a drama, The Summer Home of the Tyrones, which was written in August 1942. O'Neill Prometheusly received the 1957 Pulitzer Prize for Drama for Long Day's Journey into Night. The Long Day refers to the setting of the play which takes place during one day. The play is semi-autobiographical in manner. The Long Day's Journey into Night takes place a single day. August, it was written, it was published in August 1912 from around 8.30 a.m. Option 24, The Summing Up is an autobiography of Arthur Miller, Somerest Magum, Option C, R. K. Narayan, and Option D, John Keats. Option B, Somer, Somerest Magum is the correct answer. The Summing Up is a literary memoir by W. Somerset Magum, written when he was 64 years old First published in 1938, it covered his life from 1890 to 1938. It includes his childhood, his initial success in theatre. It is a small book filled with memorable quotes. Question number 25. The autobiography 
it is a short it's a short of life in is written by william wordsworth t s eliot graham green and alexander pope here option c that is graham green is the correct answer Henry Graham Greene is an English writer and journalist. He was born on 2nd October 1904 at Berkhamsted, United Kingdom. He died on April 3rd, 1991 at Vevey, Switzerland. Friends, by this we have completed two sets of MCQs from day 7 and 8 in this video. I wish all of you all the best. And I hope that you will be benefiting from all these MCQs that we are posing in front of you. Thank you so much for being with us and supporting our channel.